Hey guys, Jake back here again with another video, and today's going to be a lot different. Um, it is currently 4.07 in the morning. Um, we are taking a little trip, a little getaway trip that is much needed. Um, so yeah, we have a long drive. Um, got about 20 hour, about a 20 hour drive ahead of us. So I uh, figured I'd get an early start, and uh, my plan is to stop about halfway through to grab a hotel. So I'm not going to tell you where we're going yet. You'll just have to wait and see. So stick with me. A couple stops we're going to do now. Stop across the river over into West Virginia and start uh, heading down towards Lexington. So stay with me. All right, pulled over here at a shell in uh, Frankfort, Kentucky. Take a, uh, let my foot, give my foot a little rest and then uh, grab a monster and fill up with gas and get back on the road. so <laughs> it's been a long drive um i drove right about 16 hours today i am in um west kansas right now so um i'll get the name of the town in just a minute but in a nice went in got a hotel room kind of a swanky hotel i'm not gonna lie i'm, I'm pretty pleased with it but uh so we'll go ahead and grab our bag get in the hotel room and then uh get some sleep that's all we need for the night Kansas is the flattest place on earth I swear This is pretty nice for middle of nowhere, Kansas. Okay, so I'm trying to stay somewhat quiet because I got people next to me. A couple things I always do whenever I check into a hotel room. Number one, check for bed bugs. And what you want to do is you want to look, pull up all the corners of the mattress and the sheets, make sure there's nothing in them. It's just something I've always done before I even set my bag down. Alrighty, so woke up a little bit ago. Um, I eat breakfast paid all that good stuff uh, didn't feel much i was so tired i slept right around 12 hours or so and um i drove 16 hours yesterday with the time change so i was exhausted but before that i hadn't slept since the day before so i woke up at 6 a.m that was the last time i slept so i was up for like over 36 hours and uh, i was absolutely smoked so that hotel hit the spot now since we drove to long way yesterday we only have like a four and a half hour drive today so it's going to be an easy day today we are now in colorado all right so you can see the rockies off in the distance i am well over 100 miles from the rocky mountains so that's pretty amazing that you're able to see that from this distance Pretty cool. Here's the Rockies, almost to Denver. Product, and then these are all the R and D shells right here. It's, oh, nice. Like a, it's something. I smell a smoked hide. Oh, that's that's a or something. Smoker. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, nice. He's able to. This yeah, that's definitely your area for sure. Yeah, you got the little rock wall. <laughs> got the basketball hoop. And the basketball hoop and a little sauna. Nice. Just need a cut before. And the whole building thing. We just kind of like have that little area. Yeah. And, uh, but I get to use a lot of the area. All my rock climbing steps. And so there's a lot, there's some other companies that work here. Um, we get access to things like this. I wish I, I wish I had like cool enough 
meetings that I could come and do a meeting on this $25,000 German made table nice. and like pound my fist or something. <laughs> but Sweet. here he is. I built out a restroom back there with the, with the shower so I can basically ooh, ooh. live here. Oh, wow. Dang. Yeah. yeah. This is nicer than my kitchen. Yeah. We just gotta, we just gotta rearrange. This is, yeah, the view is really yeah. what. That's, that's motivating. What I like about it is that yeah. they can be in here working. I can be in there working. And you got cars driving past. So you got this like energy, but you, you know, nothing to really focus on and distract you. There's constantly motion kind of keeping you energized, but then there's the majestic mountains in the backdrop too. Yeah, those are sweet. Cool juxtaposition. Yeah. So this is the adventure kit. I told you before I got it. I end up getting, what's it, the basic kit? Yeah. Can I can I make a, a notation about yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the, the yeah. packaging because yeah. we just redid the packaging. We're pretty adamant about making it so that our packaging it doesn't have any plastic in it. That's yep. not just another piece of trash. Mm -hmm. So this is completely 100% paper, recycled paper, and can be recycled and can be burned. We did some videos that like showed how it can make you can kind of make a um, one of those yeah. cool, stoves cool. thing. But nice. we noticed that a lot of people were not just putting them in the belt. So we also. Yep. We, we incorporate it in the kit yeah. and you can chunk yeah. your backpack yep. or chunk yep. in your... Exactly. Yep. Yeah, cool, cool. So, this right here is probably my favorite mm. piece. The water kit. That's you, got... You know, this, you, have you used the big one before? I've not used the big one before. Okay, so the big one has a lot more to it. It has a 6 inch by 12 inch piece of foil in there too. So okay. It's an industrial aluminum foil. We went through and tested a bunch of different aluminum foils. Like it's not one, it's not, this is not the kind of foil you can buy from the store. This is okay. a much okay. denser, yeah. thicker foil. You yeah. can't, even Reynolds industrial foil is not as, as robust as this stuff. Okay. Um, and so it's got a piece of foil in there. It's also got a little coffee filter, a little okay. micro cool. coffee filter. Yep. So you can pre-filter out stuff. Okay. And then of course that foil works really well for making little cups, little scoops, um, little filters. Yep. And, uh, and of course it's also a piece of foil. So you can use it for all kinds of other applications, little windscreens, things like yeah. that. Yeah. Cool, cool. And we have the tool tubes. See, I dig this because try to wrap, try to just wrap fishing line around <laughs> something, it just sucks. It's a mess. The fishing line, the uh, snare wire, or just the wire. Mm -hmm, brass wire. And then saw, right? Mm -hmm, yep. Wire saw. Little photon, these are great. I yep. keep one of these on me all the Waterproof, time. Waterproof, yep. made in America too, by the way. Little whistle. Lifetime guarantee on those suckers. All right, little ferro rod, and then this is a little ceramic blade. Ceramic blade. Oh, so it won't you, seen you, get, you get past metal detectors in, right? Oh, yeah. You can take this entire adventure kit all over the world. Oh, wow. I can say that from, from me taking it ooh, all to take it all five continents. I, mean, I think it's, I've taken it to five different continents, Jeez. dozens of countries. I've um, never had an issue. I mean, okay. I've had two issues in Germany, but they uh, yeah. they were really nice about it and they packed it back up in the belt for me. Yeah, cool, cool. We got the compass. Yeah. Double A. It's like rated down to like three atmospheres. Um, kerosene filled. Cool. Um, kerosene filled. Yeah. Dang. Okay. I've never heard of that before. Yeah. So you, there, any kind of oil filled uh, is going to make it so that it doesn't have any expansion or contraction. Mm -hmm. So you can take it up to altitude and, and down. You know, yeah. I've taken these. Yeah. You know, I've taken them uh, scuba diving like 100 feet. So down. the the one that I normally run is. Uh, but yeah, you can burn the kerosene. There's a little tricky way. We did a YouTube video one time of how to light the kerosene inside the compass. But okay, you can, cool, you can cool. use that. So this is non-liquid. And that that probably works fine too. That liquid yeah. field is usually for dampening. Yep. So you can see how yours. Is yeah. Like, you you, you got to let it sit for a minute. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. I've never heard of kerosene. That's pretty neat. We have the tech cord, right? Yeah. Tech tech Nora. Nora. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, what is that? Twenty-five feet. 25 feet yeah okay. do you know what it's rated at 400 pounds yes sir yeah we got the fishing kit yeah we call it a little, little hardware kit because yeah, it's a little hardware kit yeah needle i use it's a got, needle all the time you know yeah it's got uh because it works it works in conjunction pins. with the fishing line so yep. that's the, i find myself using the needle with the fishing line yeah. to sew up a backpack strap or something yeah yeah a couple fire plugs mm-hmm got two zip ties two little classic cable ties that's right Got some duct tape, some bread ties. Yeah. Which that's nice probably with the bag. Yeah, too. that works well with the bag. And, and did you notice that this is, um, we're the only ones that have this in the U.S. anymore. This was a, a company went out of went out of um, business and we bought up like all their ties. So this is reflective, retro reflective okay, on one cool, side. Okay, cool, cool, orange. So these are, these are. You can, you can use them to mark your trail or. Trail yeah, markers, yeah, yeah, exactly. We have a 
little mini signal. And we there. just came out with that one. That's been years yeah. in the works. I like the QR code on the back too. Thank you. Yeah, we yeah. have a little how to. Yeah. Because you know that's not like that's it. that's not just you know it's got the retro reflector in there. Yep. You ever use one of those? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yep. A lot of people have not they don't understand how that works. Yep. Yep. Yeah. That's a sweet little kit, man. I think for the money, it's it's. I'm not just saying this because you're standing here. But I think <laughs> for the money, it's probably the best kit on the market. As far as quality goes, too, with the tools. I think you'd be hard um, pressed to find some other company crazy enough to put freaking Technora in there. Yeah. Like, name one other company that's going to put Technora. Uh, <laughs> like, literally one of the most expensive cords in the yeah, entire world. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I say this is not cheap whatsoever. <laughs> Uh, and I, you can buy, you can buy, you can buy going on Alibaba and you can buy knockoffs of this light for like yeah, 50 cents, right? Yeah. I've got, I've got one of the, but just the plain ones. I, we too. pay, I don't know, five or six bucks uh, ourselves yeah. just for this wow. USA yep. proton light, yep. you know? Wow. Yeah. Good stuff, man. You didn't cool, even cool. point out our cute little whistle. I did. I did. Oh, I did point out the uh, whistle. Did you, oh, no, you missed it. Did you, did you, uh, did you see the instructions on it? Blow it up your wazoo. Wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, it's This is perfectly aligned between the edges of the pocket. Okay. Um, these are the ends of the pocket. This is the center of the belt. So the reason this is the center of the belt is so you can pack your belt and you can know, ideally, the way you... This mm -hmm. is going to be the back, on the, on, on the center of your back. Yep. Meaning this is the flat of your back. Meaning anything that's going to be a flat portion, nice. you okay. want on the back. Yep. Anything on the rounder part, you do that. So... What I would suggest is we put this part because it has that foil in there. Yep. And you want that foil to not be bent too much. We'll kind of form around you though. Yeah, it will. You'll bend it. Um, but you know, on the flat, that's not gonna that's gonna be flat on your back. Yeah. Be, yeah. Um, and then a lot of people don't know this. I don't know if you noticed this, but this is like our patented design. It's purposely not sewn in the bottom. Okay. So that you gain more volume because yeah. you can tuck stuff under. Okay, cool. So cool. you can tuck the duct tape and Yeah, you can tuck it under that part and secures okay. it. Cool, cool. Um, and then also if you're if you're like a medium or a small belt, yep. you start compiling stuff a little bit tighter and so you wanna you wanna have that space. On yours we don't have to do that as much. So I would suggest we do that. We think about okay. your right hander, right? Yes. All right. So as we go, I'm gonna go ahead and close it. And because you can access the stuff in the belt while you're wearing it, mm -hmm. what I suggest is you think about, if there's something that you might be like, you wanna to get to, you might- Quickly. Yeah, you might think about that on your, on your side. Yeah. So I would suggest this, and I, I kind of compartmentalize stuff. Yeah, I'm the same way. Yeah, so this is like my tool set right, right. here, right? And then I, reach in and grab my light like all the time. I'll just like flip it out, yeah, use the light, yep. flip it back in. So I would do that over here. Okay. And this is gonna be connected over here. Okay. And since this is the fire, I'm gonna put the fire plugs right beside there. Compass over here on the right. I do, I'll just like tuck yep. it up, check, throw it back in. And then these, we can usually just like chunk in. Pretty much put them anywhere. Yeah. Cool. Stuff in. yeah. And then of cool. course, the, the, uh, Mirror can go right inside your buckle there. Sweet. Pretty cool. All right, so uh, we we purposely, we, when we first made the belts, we perp we we actually offered to have the belts pre-packed. Yeah. Um, but then it just kind of gnawed on us. Um, it kind of goes against the fact that we wanted people to put their hands and put it in their belt. They know yeah. where everything's at. They touched it. They looked at it. So it's a few days later. Haven't really filmed much because I've just been enjoying myself. But uh, we're gonna go meet someone, and then we're gonna be kind of in the desert for a week. So we're gonna be on the other side of the Rockies because we cannot go this side because of all the forest fires. So we are in Utah 
and had a little bit of a change of plans. Um, there ended up being some forest fires, so we couldn't go in the area we were going to go in Colorado. So we came here, sleeping under a rock overhang the night. Some duck cooking up. Can we start working on some stone blades? There's some of my stuff. I got some hides to make a new bag, jacket, some sleep gear. It's all Donnie stuff. So yeah, good to go. I haven't filmed much. I've been like just kind of the past couple of days, just kind of enjoying it. So I'm just gonna kind of get some clips along the way and put them in the video and hopefully you guys enjoy. We're kind of walking this ridge right here, collecting a, a stone called Chalcedony. And you got a bunch of it here to map. And it's pretty amazing. I mean, it's just full of this Chalcedony, which is, you know, kind of like a chert. But I'm gonna turn the camera around and let you guys see this. This is wild. All the white rock you see is all Chalcedony waiting to be napped. Some of it's not nappable, but a lot of it is. So. Donnie's down over that way. All right, so what we got, we're on the Cal Sydney uh, Ridge right here, and there's just tons of flakes and tons of debutage, which is all indicators that someone's been napping here. And to confirm it is when you find irregular stones. This guy right here and this guy right here. These are hammer stones. And there's no other round stones like this up on this ridge. There's no waterways, no streams, no lakes, nothing. So these round stones have absolutely, without a doubt, been brought here. We'll pull this one first. Oh yeah, without a doubt. You can see the chew marks where it's been used and held for striking all around the whole edge. This whole top side and even this bottom side is, is all smooth. And this around kind of the center line is just chewed up and eaten up, little chunks broken out, without a doubt, a hammer stone. Okay. This one. <laughs> Same thing. Oh yeah, this yeah, is that. this is a way obvious hammer stone. All this top chewed up, broken up, bottom chewed up, smooth on the sides, held in the hand just like this. Used to pop flakes. Probably any number of the flakes in and around here. That is an ancient hammer stone. This is all. Cal Sydney. Nice. Nice little piece. Smooth and waxy. Might take that with us. You get some cool like red variations. little bit of gray sheen it could be just staining from the elements but that's a chunk you can really start breaking through yeah. popping flakes off to kind of have you know, a little bit of a fogginess to it mm -hmm. just like a good example right in there nice yeah. so the good thing about certain government properties BLM National Forest National Park you can come out surface collect your materials up to a five gallon bucket no need for permits or anything to that extent it's just surface collection so that's essentially what we're doing we're going to find some good pieces bring them back to our rock overhang nap some points and some tools out of it and then drop into all those canyons tomorrow yeah 
This is wild. It's just everywhere. This flake is probably a lot longer. It broke, but we have our dorsal side, which has cortex, pre-existing flake scars. We have our ventral side, which is nice and smooth. It obviously broke here. We have our bulbar percussion, which means it was hit through some form of percussion. Uh, this would be our proximal end. The end that broke off would be the distal end. But if you just kind of catch, there's a secondary scar right in there, which is that Lurian scar, which means that the only way to produce that scar is through a form of direct percussion through a hard hammer or some form of billet. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six indicators that that flake at some point in time was removed by human hand. So you have a piece of willow as your foreshaft and you're going to take the very tip because it's fibrous and you're going to pound those fibers. You're looking to kind of create that toothbrush, paintbrush look. Once you've got your fibers, they're nice and open, you take your projectile and just stick it right down into those fibers. What's gonna happen is they're gonna act like little teeth and little paintbrushes, and they're gonna squeeze around it. I'm gonna come back and wrap this nice and tight. I'm gonna cover it with some pine pitch, and then I will have a real quick down and dirty foreshaft for the atlatl. Nice. So now, mine looks like it's, see what I'm saying? Yeah. A little bit wider on the sides, but I just need to chip away some more at this. On well, the sides? Yeah, or? you could. You could chip away some. Sometimes it's not bad if it sticks out a little bit because okay. it, it grabs the stone. Okay. But uh, you could take a little bit off to get it so it's sitting in there perfectly. And then um, you can literally just cut that groove, mm -hmm. slide it down in, and being that it's willow, yeah. if there's any little pieces sticking out, you just kind of yeah. cut them out and okay. stick it on there. It'll just be a tad sticking out, not much at all. No worries. See what you're saying with the trying to get it tapered as down and smooth as possible. Yeah, if there's an abruptness, it will 
definitely uh, you know slow it down. But as this penetrates through, it'll just ride across that pitch okay. compared to having like a hard edge just, there. Just stops yeah. it. And even though this is a little bit massy, could have taken off a little bit more of the willow. Not yeah. a, not a big deal as long as my transition from stone to pitch is good. Good. Oh yeah, that's a killer. That's nice. Oh dude, that's sweet. It's yeah. perfect. Yeah. That works. Let's go let that guy dry. Baseball. I mean, anybody put it into a baseball like that. What you got to do? Well, I'm about to pull this stick out here so I can get some flame. I got a hump a yeah, hump right there. there. Yep. But, you know, for your first one. At lateral, no tip, test plug. Dang. 